Some loved ones departed in heaven to stay. I thank God I didn't lose everything. I lost faith in people who said they care. In the time of my crisis, they will never.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Along the way, I lost some things. But thank God there were some things that I never lost. Never lost my faith. Even when the storm was raging, my faith kept me from being swept away. Thank you so much to our senior choir. Paul told Timothy, I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. My brothers and sisters, the report in our text is well known by many. The story of Mary, Martha, and their brother, Lazarus. Oh, brothers and sisters, these siblings who lived in the small town of Bethany, their relationship with Jesus was strong and filled with love and care. Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus oft times opened up their home to accommodate Jesus. They oft times opened up their home to serve Jesus and to provide for his needs. Jesus, on numerous occasions when he was coming through Bethany, would stop at the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Oh, brothers and sisters, the sisters would oft times prepare meals for our Lord. And I submit to you, Jesus spent so much time at the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus for this simple reason. They made the Lord welcome. The Lord loves to abide, to spend time in places where his presence is appreciated, in places where he is made welcome. Oh, check yourself. If he hasn't been around your place lately, it could be because he has not been made to feel welcome. You don't want the Lord around when you're doing some of everything. You don't feel comfortable with the Lord around when your activities are far from pleasing in the sight of God. But oh, when you make Jesus welcome, when you open your doors, when you make room for the master, somebody here can testify to the fact Jesus will stop by. Jesus will come in. He will abide with you. Oh, brothers and sisters, he will sup with you and you with him. 
The record tells us that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus oft times opened their doors for Jesus. They oft times made room for the master. And oh, Jesus, according to scripture, would abide with them on frequent occasions. Oh, brothers and sisters, make the Lord welcome. Make the Lord welcome. Make it known to the master, come on in. The door is wide open. I've made room for you. In fact, I've pushed some stuff aside so that there would be room for you to come in. Oh, the record tells us that Jesus would oft times abide with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And all oh, brothers and sisters, the record tells us about how Jesus felt, his feelings, his sentiments regarding these three siblings, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. When you look at St. John chapter 11, and you go up, uh, to verse 5, you'll find it talking about the Lord's feelings about Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Can I get a witness? The record tells us in verse 5, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He loved them. He loved them. His feelings were strong regarding these two sisters and their brother. And their feelings were strong concerning Jesus. Oh, when love is a two-way street. When love is a mutual thing. One person isn't doing all the loving and receiving no love in return. Oh, brothers and sisters, uh, I say it often in counseling sessions with individuals who are preparing, with couples who are preparing for marriage. Uh, love should be a mutual thing. And that makes it a two-way street. The man loves the woman and the woman loves the man. So both individuals are receiving love. Can I get a witness? Oh yes, the feelings were strong between Mary, Martha, Lazarus, and Jesus. And oh, according to scripture, oh, Jesus was not in town at the time when certain negative things started to occur. Jesus was not in Bethany. Oh, brothers and sisters, when their brother Lazarus got sick, when their brother Lazarus became ill. And that brings me to my first point as I hurry to make way for communion. And that is, number one, a family in crisis. This family, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, or brothers and sisters, constituted a family in the state of crisis. 
Now, don't forget. These, the members of this family, greatly loved Jesus, and Jesus greatly loved them, but they still ended up in crisis. And oh, I don't care how much you love the Lord. You ain't in heaven yet. And as long as we are here, we can be stricken by a crisis. I tell some people who come to me very upset and disturbed about certain circumstances and situations, I tell them, hold on. Hold on. You ain't in heaven yet. And the record says, in this world ye shall have tribulation. Is there anybody who knows what I'm talking about? Jesus declared, in the world ye shall have tribulation. So something, some kind of crisis, some kind of distressful situation is going to overtake each and every one of us. And these family members who love Jesus and who Jesus loved ended up in a state of crisis. Oh, I'm your pastor, the pastor of Beulah Baptist Church, and I love the Lord with all of my heart. But that still does not exempt me from times of crisis. And I know that the Lord truly loves me. But that still does not exempt me from times of crisis. Now listen, we got too many babies. I'm talking about grown babies. who have not come to grips with the reality that Job said, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and they are full of trouble. Before you get out of here, you're gonna to have to deal with some trouble. Before you leave this world, you're going to have to deal with a crisis. And when something goes wrong with your loved one, that loved one that you care so much about, not only is that loved one in a state of crisis, it puts you in a crisis as well. And all scripture tells us that Mary and Martha were in a state of crisis because their brother Lazarus was sick. Now crises can come in many forms and in many fashions. And all brothers and sisters, the record tells us that Lazarus was sick and as I said in the early service, not some sickness that two Tylenol and a good night's sleep would cure. Lazarus was severely ill. Lazarus was very sick. And oh, I'm sure they had sought out help from the best doctors, but none of them could provide any help for Lazarus. Oh, brothers and sisters, it was a family in crisis. And oh, if you made it last week without a crisis, 
If you made it last week without being stricken by some form of crisis, oh, brothers and sisters, nobody ought to have to tell you to praise the Lord. Nobody ought to have to tell you give God the praise and wave your hands and oh brothers and sisters no 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 if you have made it through last week blessed to be without a crisis you ought to shout for joy oh Brothers and sisters, it was a time of crisis for this family. They truly loved their brother Lazarus, and these sisters were stricken with a crisis because of their love for him. And oh, I invite you to come. I know you didn't come prepared to to take a trip. You came to Beulah. But I'm going to take you to Bethany. Come on with me to Bethany to appreciate this crisis that this family was in. Come to Bethany. Activate your spiritual imagination and go with me to, to Bethany. And oh, you'll see the sisters agonizing over the condition of their beloved brother. Taking shifts, sitting by the bedside of their sick brother. A brother who was growing worse by the day. His condition was growing more and more severe. But oh, I think I need to tell you, oh, the sisters would tell their brother Lazarus, <laughs> you hang on in there. Hang on in there. I know this situation is bad, and I know it's growing worse, but uh, you hang on in there because we are sure, we are certain that things are going to change. We are certain that things are going to turn around. Hang on in there, brother. And all brothers and sisters, the record tells us day after day, Lazarus condition grew even worse but now enough about the family in crisis I want to move to the second point as I hurry to close and that is the actions of the sisters is there anybody here who knows that sisters can make the right moves. And all of the sisters said, Amen. Amen. Oh, brothers and sisters, the sisters took action. Can I get a witness? And I submit to you, that their actions were the appropriate actions. Their actions were the proper actions. Their actions were the right actions. How do I know? Because the Bible said they made contact with Jesus. And when you're in a time of crisis, when it looks like things are going from bad to even worse, you need to know the right actions to take. 
the right moves to make. The sisters took action. Oh, they made contact with Jesus. They got the word to Jesus. And oh, I think I need to tell you, all oh, brothers and sisters, times of crisis will come to all of us. But you better know how to get in touch with Jesus. Get in touch with him. Get in touch with him. Oh, 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 oh. I remember I used to ask grandma to pray for me during certain storms and certain crises. <laughs> and grandma said something to me that I'll never forget. She said, yeah, she said, I, I'm going to pray for you. She said, but, uh, she said, when I talk to the Lord for you, she said, it's very possible that the Lord will ask this question. Why is it that I haven't heard from him? Oh, y'all ain't going to help me. Lord said, everybody's praying for you, but you. The Lord needs to hear from you. Can I get a witness? No. The sisters got word to Jesus. Their actions were appropriate. And oh, if you've made it to Bethany, you might be able to overhear the sisters telling Lazarus, Hang on in there. We've made contact with Jesus. It's only a matter of time. He'll be here. You hang on in there. Oh, brothers and sisters. But the record tells us, oh, that the days passed and no Jesus. Days pass and no Jesus. And all scripture tells us, all brothers and sisters, that our Jesus deliberately tarried. Jesus deliberately linger where he was. Jesus deliberately did not come as quickly as he could have. Oh, y'all ain't gonna help me here. But guess what? I'm going on whether you help me or not. Oh, brothers and sisters, I'm not the only one who have got word to Jesus and he did not come right away I've called him I've talked to him I've gotten word to Jesus I know he heard my prayer I know he got the word but he still lingered he still delayed. Is there anybody here who's ever experienced a delay from the Lord? You call him, you know you call him. You turned off the TV. You got away from all of them so-called friends and you got all by yourself and called on the Lord and he still delayed. What do you do when the Lord delays? Ooh, what do you do 
when you know you talk to him, when you know you got the word to him, and he still delays. Can I tell you what you need to do? When the Lord delays, what you need to do is keep the faith. When the Lord delays, you need to hold on to your faith. And you need to learn how to talk to yourself. You may not have a Mary or a Martha to talk to you, so you'll need to talk to yourself. And you'll need to tell yourself, self, hang on in there. The Lord heard you cry. You made contact with him. Don't you dare give up. Hang on in there. Can I get a witness? Can I tell you something else? Oh, y'all don't want me to tell you. And guess what? There are 10,000 devils and demons that don't want me to tell you. But the Lord sent me here over all of them devils and demons to tell you anyhow. If your situation is growing worse, it could be because you are getting closer to your breakthrough. If your situation is going from bad to worse, it could be because your miracle is about to take place. And the closer you get to your breakthrough, the closer you get to your miracle, the worse your crisis will become. Is there anybody here knows what I'm talking about? So many folks have given up. And their breakthrough was right around the corner. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're having to endure, what you're having to face. But the Lord sent me here as a special messenger from him to talk to you and to tell you no matter how worse your situation has become, your breakthrough is closer now than it has ever been before. Sometimes, oh brothers and sisters, there is a delay in an effort to test our faith. Oh, that leads me away from the actions of the sisters to the third and final point. The actions of the master. What kind of preacher would I be if I would talk about the actions of the sisters and not talk about the actions of the master? The master Oh, brothers and sisters, took action. The first part of his action was to delay. Delay. I've been staying with them. I've been at their house. I've been at the table eating with them. But I wonder, do they really know who I really am? I've been at their house, been eating at their table, but I wonder, do they really realize the magnitude of my power? 
Oh, brothers and sisters, Jesus delayed. He delayed. He delayed. But oh, I think I need to tell you, the delay came to an end. All I'm trying to tell you is there was a delay, but the delay didn't last. Oh, y'all got it. Pray that they'll get it before they get home. If you're in the midst of a delay for something that you've been praying for and talking to the Lord about and it hasn't arrived yet, the Lord wants me to tell you there's a time when the delay will be over. If you can just wait, if you can just hold on, that time of delay will come to an end. No, brothers and sisters, there was a delay, but they had to wait, but, and during the delay, the situation grew even worse because that brother Lazarus died. Does anybody know the story? Can y'all that know the story say amen? Oh, brothers and sisters, Lazarus died. And all oh, the sisters had already had the funeral. And they'd already gone to the graveyard. And by the time the delay ended, Lazarus had been dead for four days. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Lazarus is now dead, buried, and now dead for four days. His body has started to decay. His body has started to decompose. His body has started to deteriorate. Lazarus has started rotting in the tomb and taken on an odor and in the midst of that bad situation here comes Jesus in the midst of that terrible situation here comes Jesus. Scripture tells us Martha learns that Jesus was coming. Can I get a witness? And Martha, according to Scripture, left the house running to meet Jesus. You know Martha. Martha the one that Jesus had to put in check. Martha, the one who sometimes said more than she should. Martha, the one who sometimes talked when she should have been quiet. You know Martha. You know some Marthas. You have met some Marthas. 
And forgive me when I say this. You may be even, you may even be a Martha. Have you ever had contact with a Martha? And you wanted to tell her, please shut up. The record tells us Martha went running to Jesus. Look at her. And according to scripture, she made it to Jesus. And she didn't even say, I'm glad to see you. Lord, I'm so glad to see you. Thank you for coming. She didn't say any of that. Scripture says, she said this, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Lord, Lord, you finally made it, but he's dead now. Lord, if you'd only been here as soon as you got the message, my brother would not have died. Jesus, oh, brothers and sisters, didn't engage her in a lot of debate. You know, you got to know when to say nothing to Martha. But all brothers and sisters, scripture tells us Mary was back at the house and she got the news that the Lord had made it. And all brothers and sisters, Mary left the house running. And there was a group of people in the house with her. And they left with Mary. And all brothers and sisters, I wish we had some Marys that would run to Jesus and other folks follow them. I wish we had some Marys who could lead other folk to Jesus. Can I get a witness? Oh, the record tells us Mary ran and she made it to Jesus. And she said the same thing that her sister Martha had said, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus, all brothers and sisters, didn't even engage her in debate. Jesus simply said, show me. Show me where you laid him. Show me where his body lies. Can I get a witness? And all brothers and sisters, scripture tells us uh, that uh, they led Jesus to the tomb. Now Jesus didn't ask them to show him where they had laid him because he didn't already know. Jesus already knew exactly where Lazarus was. But he asked them, show me, because he wanted to be sure that they would be there when he made his move. Oh, brothers and sisters, the record tells us they showed him. And all, according to scripture, Jesus said, take away 
the stone. They had him in a tomb. A stone sealed the door. Jesus said, take away the stone. Can I get a witness? Can I just tell you, brothers and sisters, before Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, the people had to first do something about that stone. He would not even raise Lazarus until the people had first removed the stone. Can you hear Jesus saying, I worked a miracle. If you first remove the stone, can I talk to you a minute? All of us have some stones that need to be removed. The Lord wants to do some powerful things in our lives. But we got some stones in the way. Can I get a witness? Oh, watch them stones. Jealousy can be a stone. Envy can be a stone. Hatred can be a stone. Can I get a witness? Drugs can be a stone. Alcohol can be a stone. But before Jesus will do some things, you will have to remove, get rid of the stone. Talk to me somebody. Oh, oh. I know there's some so-called super saints who think they're so holy that they no longer have any stone. But can I talk to you a minute? Everybody from the pulpit to the pew, everybody has got some stones. Can I get a witness? Lying can be a stone backbiting, ditch digging, gossiping can be a stone. Talk to me somebody. Oh, the Lord wants us to deal with the stones. Oh, just turn and tell somebody. Take away the stone. The Lord wants to bless you. The Lord wants to work a miracle but you must remove the stone can I get a witness oh I wish you could have been there to see the men in the crowd start moving start removing start pushing back that stone can I get a witness no matter how big the stone is it can still be removed no matter how long the stone has been there it can still be removed no matter how heavy the stone is it can still be removed can I get a witness and all the record tells us they removed the stone and when the stone was removed then Jesus started talking Jesus started speaking Jesus took action Jesus spoke these words Lazarus come forth Lazarus Come forth, Lazarus, come forth. Can I get a witness? And oh, I wish you could have been there. Yes, yes, the record tells us Lazarus came forth. But the Bible said 
he was still bound. He was still bound in grave clothes. He was still wrapped in grave clothes. Can I get a witness? And oh, the record tells us he started coming forth. Look at him. Scripture says his feet were wrapped in grave clothes. His body was wrapped in grave clothes. And he had a napkin over his face. And I get a witness. But oh, oh. Somebody say, how in the world could he come forth while he was still bound? Let me show you how he came forth at the word of Jesus. At the word of Jesus, he started moving. He started moving. Thank God, all right. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes. 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 He was raised back to life. But even though he had come back to life, he was still bound. Is there somebody here who knows that you can be alive and still be bound? You can be alive but still be in bondage. Can I get a witness? But oh, Jesus was not satisfied with him being bound. And so Jesus said, you can see now that he is alive. But what I want you to do is loose him and let him go. Hey God, all right, loose him. He's tied up, he's tangled up, but loose him and let him go. Hey God, all right. And all, oh, they started unwrapping him. They started untying him. They started, uh, yes, releasing him. Yes, and his feet were free. His legs were free. His arms were free. His hands were free. Can I get a witness? And all, oh, as I leave you here, as I leave you here, is there anybody here who used to be bound? Is there anybody here, anybody here who used to be in bondage and the Lord set you free? The Lord raised you up. The Lord, have mercy, Lord, restored your life. Thank God, all right. Well, I've got to leave you here. I've got to leave you here.